Well, good evening and welcome to worship this Good Friday, a very somber and, of course, special service this evening. This uh, evening's service is tenebrae style, and so you'll see that we have a few candles, five actually, up front, that we will extinguish as the service uh, continues, and we will have readings from the Gospel of John tonight. And in John's Gospel, we'll hear beginning in chapter 18 through the Passion narrative to um, remember what it is that Christ gave his life for us on this ancient means of execution. And um, thank you to our musicians. Had some wonderful music last night. And tonight we have Anne on the organ again. And Krista Dix will be singing a special solo at the end of the service. At the end of the service, you'll be invited to depart in silence again this evening, as we did last evening. Uh, last evening, we ended with the Lord's Supper. And so that indeed was the final meal Jesus shared with his disciples prior to his betrayal and arrest and then crucifixion. So, you see, we begin much different than a typical Sunday morning. We have no music, we have no pyramids, no vessels. It's all been cleared away. And so tonight is, again, simply a remembrance of that moment in time when God came down on this earth and gave his own life on this cross, which is the dominant symbol here in this congregation, and tonight we will remember why that is the case. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. I invite you to please stand as we begin our service with a reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53. We'll read this responsively. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he, For grew, he grew up, up before, before him, him like, like a young, young plant, plant and like, and like a, a root, root out of out dry, dry ground. ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was, he was despised, despised and, and rejected, rejected by, by others, others, a man, man of suffering, suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he, but he was, was wounded, wounded for, for our, our transgressions, transgressions crushed, crushed for, for our iniquities. iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All, all we like, like sheep have, have gone, gone astray. astray. We have, we have all, all turned, turned to our, our own, own way. way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Please be seated. Here's another difference from a typical Sunday. I wouldn't stand up here in the pulpit until after we had read the readings, after the gospel. Tonight I'm going to speak a few words. We won't call it a sermon, we'll call it a homily before we hear the readings. And once the readings are done, we will be done. As I said a moment ago, the words which we closed last night's service with are the words, nearly the final words, that Jesus speaks to his disciples at that last supper. He hands them the bread, and he says, this is my body given for you. And so we shared that last night, and we received that body. The reason Christ went to the cross was for 
you and me. Not for himself, but for you and for me. I wish I could save myself. But if I could save myself, there would be no need for the cross, no need for Jesus, except perhaps as a great example, a teacher. The Son of God came down as infinitely more than a teacher or an example. He came down as our Savior. For some reason, it is necessary that Christ goes to the cross. I wish it could have been a different way. I don't know why. God perhaps tried some ways. God gave us the law. But the law finally cannot save us because we cannot finally follow it. God sent us prophets the prophets cannot save us because we cannot finally follow them, however hard we might try. So God decides in a point in time to send his only son. To take our sins upon himself. When we hear the passion narrative this evening, we will hear the struggles of anyone, of all of these people, to see Jesus as Savior. We would rather see him as anything but, and sometimes we would too, rather take it into our own power, our own will, our own efforts. But I want you to hear the words that Jesus speaks tonight from the cross, the last words, according to the Gospel of John, just like the last words we heard last night, this is my body given for you. Tonight, you will hear the last words, it is finished. It is finished. No more trying to climb a ladder to make your way to God. It's finished. No more attempting to justify yourself through righteous deeds or beliefs. It is finished. Time is up. Quote, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Galatians 3. Or for our sake, this is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, for our sake, God made Christ, now listen to this, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. It is finished. You are forgiven. You are saved. Why? Because of the cross. Because of what God has done for you. And, I know I shouldn't say it. Easter is when I should say it. And because Christ has crawled out of the grave. And you also through baptism <clears throat> shall do the same to new life which begins right now. I invite you to stand as we join in prayer together. Merciful God, your Son was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated.
After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that my father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people.
Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of the men's disciples, are you? And he said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus in the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent, sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of the disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves' high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? 
Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters, so to as avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to him, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth?
After Pilate had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him. But you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing out to you to let you know that I find nothing against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, we have a law and according to that law, he ought to die because he is claimed to be the son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed them over to them to be crucified. to the 
So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for, cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And this is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's, sisters, Mar mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, 
it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Today is suspended upon the tree. He who suspended the land upon the So 